Hi there, welcome back to the new video. Today we'll be looking into this paper from Google Research, which is titled as Large Language Models Are Effective Text Rankers with Pairwise Ranking Prompting. So the idea that this paper brings onto the table is to see if we can use large language models in a zero-shot fashion for doing the pairwise ranking after your retrieval has been done. So think of a use case. Let's say you're trying to build a search engine for an e-commerce platform or your product database. And the query that you'd look for is, let's say, iPhone cable. So this is a user query that you put in. And then what you expect is to see a list of products that are relevant to this query that you had. Now, there are a lot of supervised methods that talk about ranking each of these elements in a fashion that, that reflects the most relevant product coming onto the top, followed by the product that is a little less relevant and so on and so forth. And depending on how your UI is designed, you can manage to have, let's say, 10 products at one go or maybe 20 products over there. So usually how these systems work is that you have a catalog or a database of all the products with the relevant attributes that is indexed into a certain vector database or any kind of database wherein you usually have the facility of looking through it really fast. So Elasticsearch is also a popular choice in such cases. And as and when any query comes in, you make a query to this database, which returns a list of possible candidate items. Let's call it CI, which will be, let's say, top 50 items that is relevant for this query that you fired. And that again would be based on certain score that the database has implemented. It could be as simple as doing BM25 based retrieval. Or if you want to go to the semantic level, you can do cosine distance between the vector representation of each product description and the query that you have fired. Either ways, you'll get to top 50 record. Now the task is to re-rank this top 50 and have the most relevant ones on page one that has, let's say, 10 documents followed by the next page, the next and the next and the next. And usually for this, you have a lot of supervised methods that people employ, one of which is Lambda rank. Then you have RankNet, you have Lambda Mart. All of these are kind of pairwise rankers, wherein it takes in a query queue and let's say item I1 and item I2. It tries to say, okay, if I1 is preferred over I2, then this should be labeled as one, else it goes as zero. So that way it tries to shuffle up recommendations at the pairwise level and eventually you'll get to the final list that you'd want to display. So apart from that, applying LLMs to this problem is relatively new. And that's usually the case because large language models are not particularly trained for this task and the pre-training phase doesn't really account for such data set or such objective. So is the reason to why we are not seeing a lot of LLMs coming into the space. There is a literature that talks about this. This paper touches on some of them where it tries to address why so the methods don't work and what's new in this paper that seems to work quite well. So let's start with the abstract and see some of the pointers that they have highlighted. So they say with the limited success of using them as a re-ranker, it's difficult to outperform the fine-tuned baseline rankers on the benchmark datasets. Their approach, what they propose, is called as pairwise ranking prompting. And with not even very large model, they use FLAN UL2, which is a 20 billion parameter model. They show that their model outperform GPT-4, which is roughly 50x of the size on NDCG1 with a 5% margin. Whereas on the 2019 dataset, it was inferior to the GPT-4 model's performance, but over 10% better than existing models like Instruct GPT, which is roughly 10x the model size of UL2. And they also talk about various methods on improving on the efficiency of their system, wherein they go from order n square to order n. So now let's move forward and see things in more detail. Okay, so here they show like two approaches that are often used in the ranking domain. The first one is point-wise ranking, and the second one is list-wise ranking. So by the name itself, right, point-wise ranking suggests that this focuses on one data point at a time and, and is not dependent on other data points. So for example, if you have a passage P, you have a query Q, the only thing that you're interested in seeing what is the relevance of this passage for this query or if the answer can be derived from this passage for this question or not. So it could be yes or no, it could be some numerical value that's, that tells out the relevance and so on. So the thing to note over here is you have Q, you have P and that's the only thing that you use over a function F which could be LLM or any supervised method and eventually you'll get to certain relevance score or, or a decision with respect to it. Whereas list wise ranking approach takes in a query and list of candidate passages and now the idea is we want to rank all of them 
relative to each other such that the one that occurs in the first is most relevant to the given query. So in this, we expect to get something like this, wherein the fifth index is more relevant compared to the passage that's, that's on the first index for a given query queue. So these are some basic methods or prompt structures that you can use if you're using LLMs for the re-ranking step. And obviously these methods come with a lot of disadvantages. Let's see to one of them. Yeah, so they say like the point-wise relevance generation requires model to output calibrated point-wise predictions so that they can be used for comparison in sorting. So the idea is like if you change the prompt and the new score that you get with prompt 1 and prompt 2, are these comparable or do you want to normalize them further? But again, the point is why do you want to even go in this direction? Because eventually you'll want to compare n number of documents between themselves so ideally a relative comparison is okay we are not really required to get to the actual score which at a standalone level doesn't really make sense for us right so yeah that's that's a little drawback for point wise methods so one more approach that people use for point wise generation generally is the query generation approach where the idea is like you have a query queue you have a document d the first step is to regenerate a queue dash from d that tries to answer the same thing that was expected out of Q. And once this Q dash is generated, you somehow try to calibrate or calculate how good this Q dash is to Q, how close this Q dash is to Q. If that's the case, pretty much you're very sure that D is relevant for this query. So yeah, that's the crux of query generation approach. This is a paper that talks about it. I'll give a link to this in the description box. Make sure to check it out in case you're interested. Okay, so let's move to the list wise approach and its pros and cons. Okay. So using LLMs for list-wise ranking has not seen much success. So for example, the figure that we saw, right, which was 1B, which is this one. This is a very simplified or naive version of how you would go ahead by using LLMs for doing the list-wise ranking. There are a lot of complicated ways I don't think they have discussed in this paper. But yeah, so it used Instruct GPT, which is a 175 billion model. And that was seen to perform significantly worse than the fine-tuned baseline rankers when it comes to doing the list re ranking only GPT-4 was the one that could achieve competitive performance. But again, it has its merits and demerits. Merits we are all aware of. Demerits as they write, which is like they don't have an academic publication, discussing technical details, so on and so forth. But yeah, this is Google writing about OpenAI. So yeah, <laughs> more or less they have emphasized about this stuff a lot in this paper. I haven't gone through all of them. I just thought of telling about one of them. So anyways, uh, so they list down the problems that arise in the list wise ranking task if you're using LLMs. The first one is missing where the LLM would output a partial list while rearranging the elements in that. It would simply not do the task and try to output something else totally which is not relevant. It will start repeating the documents more than once and if you change the order of the elements in a way how you prompt GPT, you'll get different output rankings. So for example, if you had one, two, three, and then two, one, three. So these are three document indexes and this is how you have put it in your prompt the output or the final rank that you get for both of them is likely to be different so with their method which is pairwise ranking prompting we try to see if they prove that this method works even with smaller models which are i think flan ul2 which is roughly 20 billion parameter model and also it doesn't go for a toss a lot if you shuffle the input ordering of the documents Cool, so let's go through this. By the way, as I discussed, right, you had point-wise rankers, list-wise rankers, you also have pair-wise rankers. Okay, so this is how the illustration of it looks like. You have the query, you have first passage, you have second passage, and then you ask a trigger question saying output passage A or B, depending on which is more relevant. So all of this goes to your LM, and then you have two outputs. One is generated by the generation mode, second is the scoring mode. Generation mode generates the word which is passage A or B, whereas scoring mode generates a log likelihood score against each of the selection that it has made via generation mode. So that you can use these scores to compare passage A or B. So that you can use this knowledge to calculate the relative importance in case you would require it for any further steps. Okay. So basic look of how pairwise prompting looks like is that you take in a you take in a query queue. You have first document D1, second document D2, and then you have a function U that is responsible for telling if D1 is more relevant to D2 for a given query queue or vice versa. They also look into seeing if 
we shuffle the order of documents which is d1 d2 or put in d2 d1 then is the final ordering going to change or not so that also they have discussed in one of the tables we'll look into that so they propose like three variants of the PRP and each of them improving the computation. The first one going from n squared to the final one that they propose, which is order of n. So let's look into the order of n and login method. Okay, so the first one is sorting based. So this takes inspiration from efficient sorting algorithms like quick sort and heap sort because of the nature of doing pairwise comparison. And finally, they prefer doing heap sort because it guarantees n log n computation complexity, whereas quick sort in the worst case goes to n square. So let's take an example to understand what might be happening. So let's say you have a query Q and you had, let's say, five documents D1, D2, D3 d4 and d5 so let me first draw its representation cool so in heap sort there are only two steps one is to heapify every time which is let's say if you are doing max heapify which means at every pass the top element that exists over here has to be the greatest of all the elements that are there in that tree and the second step if that has happened, you just pull it out and replace it with the lowest most element, which is, let's say, in this case, D5, if D1 was already the highest one, and again, perform that heapify operation. And you keep doing it till only single node is left. So yeah, that's how it's supposed to work. So let's say you have query Q1, D1, D2. So let's say if these, this is a three pair that goes to your LLM and it says, okay, I see a score of D1 that's less than D2 for this given query so the first step that you do is to shuffle d2 to d1 so a new tree becomes d2 d1 d3 d4 d5 also let's suppose if d1 came out to be greater than d3 so this is a possible shuffle that you will be doing and then you again look into is there any parent node which is less than its children and let's say now that's not the case so you pop this one out so you have a final list that says d2 and then d5 replaces this position so you have a newer version that looks like d5 d1 d3 d4 and you repeat this process again till you populate this entire list and now this is your ranked list that you were aspiring for okay so that's how the heap sort is supposed to work for this use case the second one that they propose which is sliding window which is most efficient and that's for a reason because we're not doing it for the entire list we're doing it for the subset of elements which are relevant for us so this has a complexity of order k n which you can approximate to saying order n because k is not that large in this case now this is similar to how a bubble sort works <laughs> so i mean a lot of inspiration coming out from the sorting algorithms which is great to see like how you are solving the ml problems using those data structures and algorithms so cool so yeah, that's a lot of learning happening over here so let's see to how this has i think they have a figure which is figure three yeah so this is a so this is an illustration of one pass over the entire list let's say you had query q and these were the list of passages that you had which is from b c something between then finally d e a so this is an initial ranking that you get let's say from bm 25 so they have a sliding window of length two which is marked in red over here and a stride of one which means it moves to its left by one cell so which means at any given point you'll have these overlapping cells from the previous one and at every point you do a comparison between the elements the sliding window in this you'll do a and e whether a is more relevant to the query q or e is more relevant to the query q so essentially you have the triple which is e a and q that goes to your function u where you'll get the scores in case a is better you swap a and E and then your final list becomes that looks like this and then you move your sliding window by one step and then you again compare A and D A and C A and B and eventually you'll have after one single pass across the entire list you'll have passage A which is most relevant when compared to rest all the passages that you have so this was one single pass right so if I were to arrange all the elements in their correct order I would have done n passes that would have made it n into n complexity which is order of n square but the thing that the the trick that they do is like we're not always interested in all the elements right we are just interested in getting the ranking of top k elements where k is really small compared to the total number of passes that i would have retrieved at the first place so why are we even sorting all of them we should ideally be just sorting the top k elements which is which is what they call as prp sliding k and they did it for the top 10 elements so which means you do that same loop that i just saw 
n times so 10 into n which is order of kn roughly order of n is the complexity that we are talking about so yeah, that's the winning method that efficiently tries to sort up top k elements in least amount of time compared to the other algorithms that they have put in okay so yeah that was a very interesting paper uh, i personally learned a lot of things if you like this content make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel also share it across with the friends to whosoever is interested in such content. You have to spam them and say, you have to watch this video. That's pretty cool. <laughs> okay, so having said that, I'll meet you in the next one. Bye-bye and take care.